Okay, year seven, this is the third lesson in your uh, work from home history lesson pack. So, so far, we've done the Battle of Hastings uh, and we've done how did William gain control via the feudal system. So, if you haven't completed them, you do need to go back and complete them. Or the lesson today isn't going to make a great deal of sense. So, go back and do them. They would have been sent to you on Firefly uh, and then come back and do this one. So, um, today we're going to look at William I's personality. We're going to look how his personality affected the way he ruled and analyse, so to make a judgement on how far his personality made him an effective king. So, we're really going into the idea of what sort of king was William? What sort of person was he? And how did he run a country? Was he a very nice, caring, laid-back king? Was he harsh? Was he aggressive? Was he violent? That's what we need to build up as a pitch, because that's going to inform next lesson, which is on the Harry of the North. Now, you won't know what that is yet, but maybe today will give you an idea of what it could involve. So today, what's his personality like? How did it affect his rule? And did it make him an effective king or not? So the first thing I want you to do, Year 7, is there's a variety of pictures here. This one, you've got William pointing at some scrolls. This one, he's riding. This one, he landed in England after his invasion from Normandy with all his soldiers. Here, he's building uh, the fences which go around the castle. Down here, he's riding through the streets. Here, his soldiers are holding a man. There's fire going up on the background of the building. Same sort of picture. His soldiers are all firing the buildings. There's a man hanging from the tree who's dead. There he is on his knees in a religious pose, holding his sword. And here he is again, waving at his soldiers. So all I want you to do is this task. I want you to, using the pictures, and also what we know about William through the feudal system, the Battle of Hastings, etc., etc. I want you to write five sentences which describe William the Conqueror to you. So I could give you one as an example. You might start by saying, uh, William was... A military man. And you can see there that William, obviously, you can then point to this, 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 but he's obviously very heavily involved personally in the military. And I want you guys to come up with five more, please, and see what you can uh, come up with. And then in a second, we're going to go through them together. So write down five of your own. Then, so pause the video now, do that. Then when you're done, unpause and we'll go through what five I've got. Mine won't be the only five. You might have some of your own five correct. So uh, pause it now, have a go, and I'll see you in a minute. All right. So we should have now unpaused the video. Uh, and hopefully you've all had a go at writing down five uh, sentences which could summarise William the Conqueror to you based on those four uh, five pictures or however many there were it's more than five uh and your own knowledge so i my first one was william was a military man which could be one i apologize for my handwriting i've told you before i'm doing my best uh my handwriting isn't very good at the best of times i am trying uh hopefully i'm gonna get better the more of these i make so number one William was a military man, and we've got that from there. What about this one? He's on his knees in a religious pose. So a second one we could do is William was a religious man. That would be a very accurate second one. Good. Now, what about these where his men are hanging farmers, burning the fields, burning the houses? We could say... Uh, go to this colour. William was a violent man. Sort of links in to your military a little bit, uh, but they are separate uh, adjectives. What else can we see? Maybe if we look down here, where there's men all surrounding him, we could say, and this may be correct or incorrect, William was popular and finally i think looking at this one here you could say uh william was very organized and you'll see a lot of this 
through things like the Doomsday Book, which we're going to come on to in a couple of lessons' time. But there, for me, are five uh, good ways you can describe William. Now, you might not have this, but if you do, give him a green tick for me to show you've got it. Any I've got which you haven't got, can you add in green pen underneath your work? And, uh, yeah, then we can move forward. Okay, what I want you to do now is on your next clean page in your book, you're going to need, I'd say, at least three quarters of a page. Try and aim for an entire page. And what I want you to do is draw out this table in your book. You don't need to draw William in the middle. You can if you want to. But you need to put at the top of your page a pen portrait for William. And then you just need to separate your page into four. So just draw four boxes and in each one, you need these four titles. Family, background, description of his character, military experience, religious beliefs, and support. So do that now. Pause the video. Have a go at doing that in your box. You don't need the drawing. You just need the, the separation into four boxes. And you need those four headings at the top. And then the second, we're going to go through a variety of information together. And you're going to... Um, make notes in your book based on what I'm talking through so you can build up a pen portrait of William. So pause the video for me now and have a go at creating this table in your book. Okay, so by now we should now have our table in our book ready to go. Uh, and I'm going to show you a variety of information about William to allow you to build up the pen portrait. Now what this is going to do uh, is going to uh, give you an increasingly more complex view of his character. You're going to know his family's background, his military experience, his religious beliefs and support. So with every slide, you need to be, think, what of those four boxes does this go in? So for the first one, it's on about he was the Ill illegitimate son of Duke Robert of Normandy, which made him his heir. So that's obviously a family and background one. So as I go through each one, you've got to think, which one does each one go into and put it in the correct box for me? So first one, illegitimate son. William was the illegitimate son of Duke Robert of Normandy, which made him his heir. Couple of words to deal with there. Number one, illegitimate. In those days, it means that William was... Um, in those days, it was important that you were married to the person you had a child with. These days, it's, it's nowhere near as important. But in those days, it means his parents were not married and probably the result of an affair or being a mistress of Robert of Normandy. So William was the illegitimate son of Robert of Normandy, which made him his heir. Now, as we know from our full claimants lesson, heir is next in line for the throne. So, uh, he was Duke Robert of Normandy's next in line for the throne. So when Duke Robert of Normandy died, he would take over. Duke Robert died in 1055. William was only about eight years old. So in this one, we can put... Uh, Ill, how do you spell illegitimate is the question with an E, Mr. Baker. Illegitimate. Son. Uh, took over. In. Now, I physically can't write any smaller than that. So, obviously, you're going to write a lot smaller and a lot neater than me. Uh, but that's an idea of what you need to be doing for each slide. So, make your notes from this box uh, into your top left box for me. Military experience. Now, this one isn't difficult. It's obviously going in the military experience box. Uh, so, let's read it together. Military experience. William's toughness and, and determination had always been a part of his character. He survived several assassination attempts on his life. We all know what an assassination attempt is, don't we? Assassination attempt is where someone tries to murder you because of your position or your power. Once he could lead his own armies, he was constantly at war, eliminating his rivals. So here, you need to make a note that he's really tough, really determined, survived a lot of assassination attempts, and he was very, very good at leading armies. And he was always doing it. From the moment when he took over as Duke from when he was eight, he was always at war. So he's a love, he loved war and battle. He's very tough and determined. So pause it, make your notes. All right, as a military leader, again, you can put this in your military uh, experience box. By 1066, he had a decade's experience of war. But remember, he took over from his dad in 1035. So it wasn't until sort of the 1050s where he's old enough to lead his own troops. But by 1066, he had 10 years experience of war. He had a good knowledge of military strategy, good leadership and knowledge of logistics and siege warfare. So that's on how to plan battles is, is your logistics. So that's planning. 
and siege warfare is your uh using sort of when you lock someone in where they are so siege warfare let's say they're hiding in a castle and you're surrounding the castle you know um how to starve them out and make them surrender he's also good at castle building and good cavalry ta tactics and this bit here is showing them building these castles we're coming onto that in another lesson cavalry guys we'll know this from our previous lessons cavalry is soldiers riding horses into battle as opposed to running in or walking in so again make your notes hopefully your military box is going to be nice and full, uh, filled up which will show to you how, how important the military was to william as a man greed as well as being stern and relentless William was criticised for his avarice. Now, avarice is the love of money, treasure, nice things. So he was quite greedy in his desires to own nice things. His love of money and treasure and his de desire to own everything. So, again, which one could we put this in? Not military experience, definitely not. Religious beliefs, no support, no. It's definitely a description of his character. If you can use the word av avarice in your notes in there, that would be absolutely superb. So make your notes in there for me. Religion. Now, we obviously know where this is going. It's obviously going in there. Um... William was very religious. William promoted church reforms with Archbishop Lanfranc, and he also founded the abbeys. Now, if you want a bit of extra knowledge, GCSE level knowledge, William actually appointed Lanfranc to replace a man called Stigand. S T I G A N D. That's quite neat, Mr. Baker. Well done. I'm getting better at it, folks. Stick with me. So, to replace Stigand, and Stigand was viewed as quite corrupt. Now, for those who don't know what corrupt means, it means he was dishonest and he'd sort of take money for his own personal benefit. So, Van Frank, he replaced Stigand with Van Frank, and um, it shows how committed William was, was uh, to the church. He also founded Abbey, so Abbey's a really big church, where mo or where monks would live. It was interesting what the church would do for him. So, he was religious, but he also liked the fact that the church being really powerful in 1066, it could also do a lot of good work for him. So, pause, put that in your religion box for me. Okay, he recognised that his life had been brutal and is supposed to have repented on his deathbed. So he could put that in the script of his character or religious. But when he looked back at his life when he died, he saw, and you will see what happens here, this is the Harry and the Denor of a horrible event. And apparently he repented on his deathbed. Should he have repented earlier? Probably, but definitely something you could put on his personal life box. William took his English throne by force, but was always concerned to be accepted as the legitimate heir to Edward the Confessor. So although he sort of killed his way to the throne, he wanted people to accept him as the proper heir to Edward the Confessor. He wanted to be the legitimate, the proper king. So he could put this under um, the script of his character, his desire to be viewed as proper. He didn't want to just hold it by killing people. He wanted to hold it because the people wanted him to be king. He was devoted to his wife, Matilda. When she died in 1083, William is said to have wept for days. He trusted Matilda. She served as regent in Normandy many times. So when William was over in England sorting things out, his wife, Matilda, was allowed to run Normandy. That's what a regent is. It's someone who runs somewhere um, when you aren't there. So she was the regent for him many times in Normandy. Now, I know we did the lesson on whether Anglo-Saxon society was fair for women. This is Norman society, and for women... This was a big deal to have a woman ruling Normandy. It showed how much he trusted his wife and how much trusting he was of women. So again, description of his character and family. That one could go in. Uh, where were we? We've done that one. Right, okay. This task, folks. And we've done that. that um, this one, you should have something in all the boxes. There might not be anything for support. There isn't anything for support. So you can ignore support for now. I uh, must have missed off the slide, but the other three you're fine with. This one, guys, is a positive and negative um, task. On in front of you is 14 statements about William the Conqueror. What I'd like you to do is read each one and decide whether it goes into positive or negative about William the Conqueror. So let's do the first one together. Duke William was able to conquer a nation of 2 million Anglo-Saxons with only 10 Norman, 10,000 Normans. His Mott and Bailey castles were an act of genius. So that's definitely a positive. So if we do red, uh, green is positive and red is negative. William the Conqueror made England a much safer place because he kept good order in the country. Travellers could go unharmed. Uh, unharmed. No man dare carry each other. 
So that's of, sorry, that is obviously a positive. The harrowing of the north was one of the most brutal things that happened during this age. Hundreds of villagers were killed, thousands of people killed, many more so. Obviously a negative. I'll, I'll, all I want you to do is draw this sort of table in your book for me. Uh, so get that drawn. And then all you're going to do is you're going to go through this and you're just going to put them in your own words, just bullet points. So for that first one, you can put, um, as a positive, castles were genius. And that'll be that one done. For that one, uh, the negative, on the negative side, you can put Harry and the North. how cruel that was you need to go through and you just need to decide whether it's positive or negative and just write it really shortly down don't write everything out guys you'll be here all day um just write down for me um whether you see it as a positive or a negative um and then put it in the table for me so pause the video have a go at that now please Okay, so hopefully you've been through and decided whether they are positive or negative. I'm going to go through and just show you what I think, and you need to make sure they match up. So William may have made up the story that he promised the crown. He'd also forced Harold into making a, 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 a holy promise. Obviously bad. He lied about the crown, uh, and he forced Harold into making a holy promise to support him. William was greedy, and the Anglo-Saxons liked to have a ruler who spoke in a different language. He was ruthless. Obviously negative. Uh, the Anglo-Saxons had a weak legal system. William sorted out the justice system and made new courts and be made better laws. So he took a bad legal system and made it good. Obviously a positive. William was a strong king and laid the foundation for his own family to rule over England for the next 150 years. He was a strong king. That's obviously a positive. Norman law was harsh. The Anglo-Saxons weren't used to them and felt that many of them punishments were unfair. Obviously a negative if they were too harsh. Any Anglo-Saxon people who died in battle and rebellions, uh, should that should say... Many Anglo-Saxons died in battle and in rebellions against William. Apologies for that. Homes and crops and animals were destroyed. Homes were also destroyed to make way for cattle. Obviously a negative. Women lost a lot of rights. If you remember back to our lesson on Anglo-Saxon culture, how fair we thought we sort of be when they had property rights and were important in the church. But he lost a lot of rights in the Norman laws. It's obviously a negative. William gave out savage punishment. For example, he skinned. By that, he means he, put, he tears the skin off the inhabitants of a town when they disrespected his mother and publicly branded people by shoving hot irons in their eyes. Obviously a negative. The feudal system was a system that made sure the country was ruled well with consistency. William gave land to his supporters and he promised to rule well. Obviously a positive. The Normans were deeply religious and determined to make England a more religious country. They built hundreds of churches and cathedrals. I guess if you don't think religion is important, you wouldn't be bothered by that. But in those days, religion was important to people's lives. So that's definitely a positive. The Doomsday Book, which we'll come to, is proof of how efficient and well organised William was. He was able to use this information to rule the country well and make England kings richer and strengthen the army. Obviously a positive. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positives and second seven eggs. So they should be in your table please check to make sure you got them right for me uh if not just green pen them you can just draw an arrow so if you put one on negative which should be on the positive just draw an arrow to show where it should be or vice versa tick the ones you got correct if you've got your green pen with you lovely jubbly all right you know how mr baker loves an interpretation and loves the source there are two interpretations and you've got to do four tasks to deal with these interpretations now never fear this is your second to last task before you finish this lesson today so uh let's read interpretation b together now, this is from a guy called peter Ackroyd in a book called foundation the history of england volume one made in 2011 no cultivated by cultivated it means land which you could farm no cultivated land was left between york uh, and Durham, they're both places in the north. And a century later, the ruins of the destruction were still to be found. Yet the north would rise against William no more. He had created a desert and called it peace. In the harrowing, or the harrying of the north, William had not behaved as an English king. He had behaved like a tyrant. A tyrant is somebody who controls through making people scared of them, not through making them like them. 10,000 Normans were attempting to control a country of 3 or 4 million natives. And the only weapons they had at their disposal were those of brute power and terror. Spies and collaborators, punishments, beatings and secret murders were indispensable. The word indispensable means needed. They were needed. So it's saying, the Harry of the North, um, he had not behaved as an English king 
uh, ruins of the destruction in the north. He had created a desert. Uh, spies, collaborators, punishment, beatings, and secret murders. Obviously not being very positive about it. Interpretation C by Mark Morris, William the Conqueror Reassessed, History Today, Volume 66, Number 10, 2016. So this is Interpretation C. What is surprising about William's behaviour as King of England was not that he imprisoned his enemies for a long time, but, but that he bothered to imprison them at all. Although many of the English elite perished at Hastings or during the course of the rebellions that followed, only one high-ranking Englishman, Earl Wolfeoff of Northumbria, was deliberately put to death, beheaded in 1076 for his role in a plot against the king the previous year. So he didn't imprison many people. He only killed one high-ranking Englishman, and that was because he planned to get rid of the king. So, B is very critical of William, but C is very positive. Now, your first step is to make a list of any of the negative comments made by um, William in Source B. Then make a list of more, any comments maybe more positive about William in Source C. Then say what the sources agree on. So maybe talk about the both talk about the battle where Hastings killed a lot of people. They both talk about those uh, rebellions against him. So, for example, they talk um, about the um, the rebellions. So the fact the North would not rise again. I mean, they'd risen before. You've also got to talk about the plot of the king. They both talk uh, about... Um, they both talk about that. So what do they agree on? And then talk about what they disagree on. You can talk about this one. says he was very using force a lot, using violence. This one suggests, uh, source C suggests he doesn't really use force or violence a lot. So have a go at them for me. Please pause the video and have a go. All right. To finish year seven in this delightful video, you've got an exam question. Describe two features of William the Conqueror's reign. Now for this... You, there's a very strict structure you've got to follow, and it goes like this. One feature of William's reign was dot, 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 an example of this is dot, dot, dot. So let me do one for you, then you can do one yourself. So, one feature. In these questions, guys, you've got a feature is something which is unique about that thing. So what's unique about William the Conqueror's reign? What makes it stand out? So I could say, one feature of William's reign was... His commitment to religion. An example of this is he should be an E built many churches in his reign. If you can't read what I've written, rewind it and listen to me talk through it again. One feature of William's reign was his commitment to religion. An example of this is he built many churches in his reign. Now you need to do one of your own. Now you can choose the feature. So you could choose your feature to be violence, uh, military, Uh, or terror. Choose one of them, use the same structure, and have a go. Pause that and have a go, then unpause it for me. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. Um, hope it's now in your box. Don't worry if it's not perfect, just have a go for me. Uh, and we'll have a look at that when eventually we get back to school. So that concludes today's lesson. Thank you for watching and taking part. If you do need to contact me, respond to the, t the Firefly task this has been sent on, or... You can email me directly on jbaker at trentonacademy.co.uk and I hope you're all taking care of yourself, looking after yourself and working hard. Hopefully 
we'll be back in school soon so we get uh, can get back to normal lessons but thanks for watching i'll see you when we have our next lesson cheers ciao